What's up, everybody? This is Matt Hospital, the prospecting geologist here, um, and we are going to be doing a LIDAR type video today. It's actually a change from what I was originally planning to do, but I've kind of stumbled into a very interesting tool that could potentially help, uh, help with determining where to try to dig to find potential placer gold deposits. Um, and basically what this thing is within Saga GIS, which is the program we'll be using, and then Google Earth, it's called the Stream Power Index. And basically, as you can see right here on the screen, it's a measure of the erosive power of flowing water, and it's calculated based upon the slope of the contributing area or watershed basin, as well as the, um the slope of the stream itself and everything. So it basically shows which areas of a stream are potentially eroding and which areas of a stream are accumulating. Um, now, if you're a prospector, I feel like that should probably pique your interest on what that could potentially do for you. And from what I'm seeing is... I'm just very much getting into this kind of the stream power index and figuring out what it can do. But it seems like there's a lot broader applications as well, including like figuring out where gold could be coming from across a surface outside of a stream and more. So basically that's what this video is going to be going over is stream power index and how to go through and do it within, uh, Saga GIS using DEM LiDAR files, uh, which all of our LiDAR files are generally gotten through uh, the national map, which here we'll just go the national map, just basically go to Google and type in the national map download. It'll bring you to that. Click there. And then what you want is... Uh, the elevation products here. Let me re expand that back out and deselect what is currently all selected in here. And then just go one meter DEM and show. And that will show you all the one meter vertical accuracy LIDAR that's available across the U.S. Um, so I think we want to try and do two examples here. We're going to do an East Coast example and maybe a West Coast example. Um, I guess we'll start with the West Coast example. So let me go in here. We'll just find, I don't know. Let's just find a section of the Yuba, the South Yuba. Zoom in. Let's go. Where's search products? And it's going to cover this whole little tile here. And I will try and provide these either within the description or a, an exact link for you to play with. We'll go download TEF. Download, save as. Um, and I already have a thing. We already got this other one saved in here for over in Virginia. So we got that one saved already. We've gone through the process, so we're good there. So we save that, save that into your folder, and then we can exit the internet, and you want to open Saga GIS, uh, which Saga 8.3.0 is the current one I have. There may be newer ones. Um, I have other videos about kind of how to go through and download that. I'll provide links in the this video description below. But basically, then we're going to go to File, Grid, Load and pull up the folder that this was in. And we're gonna try the uh, California one on the South Yuba. So go open, let her load. Okay, so she is loaded. So now let's begin the step-by-step -step process to get you to the stream power index. So we are gonna go to geoprocessing down to terrain analysis, pre-processing, Phil Sinks, Wang Lu, I think is the author of this. And basically what Phil Sinks is doing is that if there's like a road blocking 
the stream drainage or river drainage, the LIDAR sees that as there's now a dam there and the water can't go past it within the LIDAR software. So what this does is it fills those as though it's now kind of a pond, so areas within that filled may not be perfectly accurate, but it needs to be done in order to get the rest of the map done. So we'll go to fill sinks. You want to go grid system as that one there, which is the only available option. And then also DEM, our basically downloaded file, and everything else it will generate. And it might take a little bit, so we may pause here. Okay, so now that filled sinks has completed, we now have this new file here, which is the main one we want, with the no sinks in parentheses there at the end. So from here, we're going to go back into geoprocessing, down to terrain analysis, hydrology, flow accumulation, flow accumulation top down. This is all I've explored with so far. There are many other things in here that I'm going to have to start to mess around with to see what all could be done. But I think there's a lot of potential so but let's go into that flow accumulation top down grid system is going to be the only option elevation will be our new file with the no sinks um duh, duh, duh. and then down here in the method we it's usually set on something else and these are also more things i need to play around with but currently we're using deterministic eight and that should be everything. So then we hit OK and we let that run. Okay. So now that flow accumulation has completed, we can now go back into terrain analysis in the geoprocessing tools and go down to hydrology, topographic indices, stream power index. And then it brings you up to this screen here. Grid system, same as always. Slope is going to be no sinks. Catchment area will be flow accumulation. This one you can leave blank. And then you just, it's going to create stream power index. So we'll get OK. And that is going to start. This one usually doesn't take as long as the others. So we should be ready there, and you can double click and go new. Now it doesn't look like much right now because we're quite zoomed out, but as you zoom in, you'll start to see these nice lines. And basically, red is where there's going to be high stream erosion happening. And then the lighter the color, here we can go show print layout. So basically, Red, high stream erosion. White is equal, and then I would say green is going to be more of a deposition environment. Um, so let's close out of that. I don't want layout anymore. How do we get back? Okay, so now we're back into just our normal one here. We will resize the entire one, remove scale bar, and then what we're going to do is export it to export map to Google Earth, which is within you go up to map here, export to Google Earth. And the cell size you'll want to put to one instead of ten. And then click OK. And this might take a little bit. So basically once it loads into Google Earth, it'll look something like this. And while it looks like a giant white square, if you look very closely, there's some very light lines traced about in here, which are our waterways. Um, and as I said, red is going to be areas, or should be areas, where there's going to be erosion happening. White should be... Uh, 
not erosion, not quite deposition. And then uh, green and darker green should be deposition. So we can't see much on this one here. Let's go over to the main Yuba. Let's go to the main Yuba channel here. So the red, like I said, should be areas of erosion. Now it's calculating this based off a large number of factors and variables. So I'm not quite sure how accurate it is. I know on some of the Virginia ones I looked at where I'm quite familiar with the area, it matched up very well with areas where you would suspect erosion would be going on or where deposition would be. Um, so it seems to be able to predict it fairly well. Um, We'll take a look here. So we see red right here in the middle. I can see that as being erosion. To me, I would think those rock faces would be erosion, and you get a large red all the way around there right on that sweeping outside turn and it kind of goes into some green through there another red yeah I can see that um, so being able to just kind of use the Yuba here where you can actually see what's going on a little more can help so I would expect that right there to be red this here and we're gonna freeze up so we can also use it to try and predict on streams where we can't see easily where there may be deposition areas and erosion areas. And while I will say out in California, it seems to be generally pretty easy to determine that on where you're possibly going to have like exposed bedrock and erosion versus areas of deposition out east. It can sometimes be much more difficult to determine what's going on with that. Uh, but yeah, here you can see this little stream. We can't see much even for California. It's all kind of treed in. It looks like that's a waterfall, it looks like. So what's that show up as? Okay, so we have what looks like definitely a little waterfall right here that we can see. So let's see how well this matches up. As you can see, as you can see right here, right where that little waterfall is, we got a red, which is kind of how I would expect that to be. Um, let's go back up to the main Yuba here and just take a look around at some more stuff. So we got some green here for deposition and we got red. See, it's interesting. Not sure exactly how it defines it all, but I don't know. So, this is just something I found and I thought it was cool and possibly helpful. So I wanted to bring it to you guys. I will be working to figure more of it out here. But yeah, I think it'd be helpful for prospectors who want to get a, on the cutting edge of things and messing around with stuff to try and figure out where some placer deposition may have been happening. Yeah, with the ability to be able to see potentially where deposition areas would be before going into the field, to me would always be nice. And then, like I said, we'll try and take a look at East Coast stuff here shortly. But generally, it can be sometimes harder to kind of determine where uh, erosion and deposition areas may be. So let's uh, move on, and we're going to take a look at a place in Virginia. Okay, so now we'll take a look at some places in Virginia here with this. I already went through and did it through Saga GIS just to not bore you with another run through of how to do this stream power index. We'll load it up here. It seems to not be like my computer just doesn't seem to like it. It keeps kind of freezing every time I want to load one up. So yeah, notice that it's a little intensive on the computing power. We'll zoom in on this area. Some of you may know this area, some of you may not. 
but I know there's a little waterfall and stuff right there, which should then be erosion. See, it keeps doing this, and it's, I don't know why. It keeps having to, like, reload it every single time, even though it was just there, and it's freezing itself. Uh, gotta love computers. But yeah, like, right here, there's a little waterfall. You can see there's little areas of erosion. And then just kind of status quo areas, I guess, with not much deposition. But you do get some right in here. Which, yes, I would suspect that would be a good area for deposition. Um, but yeah, it just kind of gives you a good color gradient idea of like what areas within your streams are going to be generally eroding versus generally depositing. And, I mean, I, for one, definitely going to be checking this out in the field more. Um, can definitely help with finding potential new deposits of placer gold. And we're going to have to uh, explore around with this feature more to see, uh, one, how well it relates to the real world. And then also what other things it can do like can i see where there's going to be erosion happening um near sources and things like that to then point to where gold may be ending up in the creek in places where you wouldn't think it would be um but generally like this area i'd expect to be able to find more bedrock right here easier whereas the depositing areas maybe not find bedrock quite as quickly or easily but there also might be a better deposit on bedrock in the areas of deposition um so we're gonna keep playing around with this some uh, i'll probably do some future videos on it with as i figure out more things but it's just like a cool kind of cutting edge tool for you guys who really want to get to mapping and figuring out where deposits may be before you go into the field to hunt them. Um, I know I'm definitely going to be checking in the field on some of my areas and matching it up with maps that I already have. So to match like the current where I know a whole bunch of gold has been found and what those areas show um for the stream power index and everything so just overall a cool gis tool to potentially help you find uh more placer deposits or more exposed bedrock or various other things in between on what you want to look for in your area uh but yeah and then probably not a incredibly exciting video for a lot of people but it could be a very useful cutting edge tool that i've never seen anybody discuss uh, with GIS or gold prospecting. So just trying to bring you the latest and greatest of ideas for prospecting and using modern technology to help better your uh, prospecting gold take in the field. Thanks, guys.